Brothers and sisters, today I was thinking another topic, but as you know, what is happening in Syria, in Gotha? What is the mini Qiyama is taking place by the criminals of this world? Dropping all these bombs and killing all these people, children, women, old, ill, who are already seized for a long time. Besieged. There is no entrance of the food to them already hungry, and finally dropping the bomb to kill the hundreds of the people. A bloodshed in this town of al -Ghota. that al -Ghota is a very historic place and a very significant place for this ummah that is targeted today. And the whole world is almost silent. What you see in the media, very little bit, as nothing happened. Well, sometime, one small incident happened, big kind of media campaign you can see, but there is nothing happening. The world leaders, as if they are blind, there is no big voice to stop all this genocide. When we see all these, and what is their crime? They are Muslims, they are believers, and it happened, it's not first time, what we do about this? First thing, we think, we don't become hopeless, frustrated, that Allah has abandoned us. No. It happened to the previous prophets, alayhim salatu wasalam, or Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasalam, sahaba, tabi'un. In the history of mankind, all these kind of atrocities, Surah Al-Buruj is talking about the believers, the way they were killed, punished, burned, only They're The only crime was that they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this test, why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has hikmah. He has this ability to destroy the enemies of Allah anytime. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has hikmah and wisdom. He sometimes tests us, but in the end we should put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he can help, he can rescue this ummah. We need to come to him. And it could be tamhis, it could be purifying us that we are so much behind the dunya, running behind dunya. We abandoned akhirah. We are not sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't come to the Quran and Sunnah in our life. We follow our desire because of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may uh, make us that we are coming back to him. This is his one of the wisdom that he said, Wallahu gharibun ala amrih, walakinna akthar al nasi la ya'lamun. And Allah is predominant over his affair. But most of the people do not know we should know if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has a plan. He did this to many peoples before. The prophets were suffering. But in the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dealt with them. Fir'aun, many of the Namrud, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dealt with them. So we need to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and put hope and trust in him that he subhanahu wa ta'ala can help us. We need to come to Allah. This is the main lesson we need to learn. Second thing, our duty as a fellow Muslims, we come to help them. What kind of help we can do? First of all, we give them, you know, they are hungry, they are injured, they need some sort of emergency relief things. We must help them. Well, while we are eating here, sleeping in a room which is warm, with all these facilities, full stomach of the food, we remember them. We, are, we don't forget them. We do our duty. We donate to them. We give them charity through many of the organizations. Even today, appeal will be coming. We need to donate generously to show that we are part of this ummah. As in hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-mu'minu lil-mu'min kalbunyan yashuddu ba'dahu ba'da wa shabba kabayna asabi'ahi. Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the relationship of the believer with another believer is like the bricks of a building. 
each strengthens the other. Illustrated this by interlacing the fingers to, of both of his hands, he physically shown that this is an inseparable a body. In, he came in another hadith. مَثَلْ مُؤْمِنِينَ فِي تَوَادِّهِمْ وَتَرَاحُمِهِمْ وَتَعَاطُفِهِمْ مثل الجسد إذا اشتكى منه عضو تداعى له سائر الجسد بالسهر والحمى. He said the believers in their mutual kindness, compassion, and sympathy are just like one body. When one of the limbs suffers, the whole body responds to it with wakefulness and fever. In another hadith, Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Man la yarhamu nas, la yarhamu Allah. He who is not merciful to people, Allah will not be merciful to them. So this is the thing today and whenever the appeal comes, we don't forget them, we give them charity, try to help them. And next thing is to do dua for them. Dua, many of us will underestimate the power of the dua. And they think dua is something only weakest people should do. Subhanallah. Dua is the most powerful weapon in the hand of a believer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is waiting for our dua. This is a duty we do, and it is very powerful. It is always accepted with the ikhlas when you do. Many people will complain, subhanallah, how many days, how many times I made dua, and it is not responded. It is not accepted. While the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, if dua is, is, is being accepted, continuously being accepted, until you say, I have done so much dua and not accepted, then Allah stops accepting your dua. How it will be responded? How it will be? Uh, what is the sign of acceptance? That if you are still confident in Allah, if you still did not lose the hope, this is a sign your dua is accepted. But when, in which method, it leaves, you leave it to in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in various ways the answer of dua will come to us. I'm not going to go to those ahadiths today. But we should have confidence in Allah that he accepts our dua. And our great predecessors of Salihin were confident in their dua. They think they were facing difficulties as we faced. Sahaba faced, Tabi'un faced, Prophet sallallahu himself faced. But they didn't give it up. They did not lose the hope in Allah's mercy, his protection. And one example is Ibrahim ibn Adham was having a journey by a boat or a ship. In the middle of the sea, some kind of storm started. And it, a huge wave, water wave was coming like mountain. People are screaming. Some of them knew Ibrahim ibn Adham is here. They're running to him. Where did Ibrahim ibn Adham find him? Find him. So he can make dua for them. So they found him. He is... Uh, using his uh, sheet, uh, to, to sh his shawl, to cover his body and he's sleeping. He's lying down, sleeping or whatever he's doing, Allah knows. And they said, uh, oh, what are Ibrahim you're doing all you're sleeping here? Everybody is scared and something, big, big storm. You're not concerned about this? You don't see what is happening? He said, I am more shocked. Uh, the, the, the wave and all these, yes, I, am, I have feeling, but I'm more shocked of seeing you that you uh, are. ليس هذا بشدة إنما الشدة الحادة إلى الناس. But I can see the more worst thing that you are looking for me or somebody else to help you. This is more shocking than the wave and the storm itself. Why? Because if you are going to Allah, that could be the right thing. You are missing that. You are not going to Allah yet. You are screaming and looking for who, who, who can help you. Come to Allah. Then, of course, in the end, he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma araytana kudrataka fa'arina afwa. Oh Allah, you have shown us your power. That you can destroy at this moment. Your power, you have shown us how this, this sea became a place of danger. We have seen, witnessed your power. Wallah, could you show us now your forgiveness? 
could you show us now your rahma, your mercy, your blessing? After a little while, فصار البحر كأنه قدح زيتين. So the whole sea became so cool and calm, like you put a vial in a bottle, and if you don't shake, it is stable. That's why the sea came down to its coolness and calmness. This is the confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we complain to Allah. Three kind of complaint. Prophet Yaqub alayhi salatu wa salam complained, إِنَّمَا أَشْكُوا بَثِّي وَحُزْنِي إِلَى اللَّهِ After losing Yusuf alayhi salam and then losing his son Bin Yamin, he was praying to Allah, crying to Allah. His children said, why you are continuously crying and all this you are, you are, you are destroying yourself? He said, no, I only complain my suffering and my grief to Allah. I'm allowed to pray to Allah, to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Imam Ibn Qayyim rahmatullahi making tafsir of this verse of, and dua of Ya'qub alayhi salatu wa salam that uh, uh, there are three levels of complaint people make. The worst complaint is ashakwa akhassu shakwa and tashku Allah ila khalqi that you make Complain about Allah to the people. Look at the Muslim situation. Allah is not going to help them. How many times you make dua Allah? Allah doesn't respond. As if you are complaining against Allah. A couple of Juma, a couple of days, uh, Juma ago, a brother came. That uh, Imam Sahib, I am having problem in my life, one after another. I do so much dua. I did tahajjud as well, made dua, but nothing is changing. Even worse thing come. As if he's complaining about Allah to me. Nauzubillah. I've given him positive message, don't worry. So what is, this is a level of complaint people will make as if they are complaining against Allah. This is the worst kind of complaint one can make. And the medium, medium complaint is that you too, that you may complain to Allah, oh Allah so and so is doing so much zulm upon me. Allah, you can, can you take revenge? This complaint is allowed. But it is not very high level of complaint. Is not that much appreciated. What is highest level of complaint in terms of appreciation by Allah? That is Allah and Tashkua Nafsaka ilay. That you complain yourself about yourself to Allah. Well, I am the one responsible for all the suffering of the Ummah. Because I am not sincere to you, Allah. I was running around behind dunya. Desire. complain to Allah about ourselves. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa is not going to change state of affair situation of a nation until they come forward. They make steps to change themselves. Then Allah's rahmah, it comes. We need to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this, this dua is not a shakwa. It's also is it complain against ourselves. We make a commit, promise, a commitment to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a beautiful example in the hadith, or in the story of the Salafi Salihin. Fadal ibn Ayyad, rahimahullah, one day he came to pray in the masjid. He found nearby uh, or neighboring house of the masjid, neighboring house, there is a ch ch child is crying. His mom is giving him a bit. bit. He, did, he was naughty, did something wrong. She was slapping him or giving him with a stick a few, uh, you know, a little bit of punishment. <coughs> then he ran away, opened the door, ran away from the mom. And he was hanging around. Father and I had a boy is crying and running around. I was observing him. After an hour or so, he is, uh, became going here and there, uh, left, looking left and right. He thought he needed to go back to the home. He gone to the home again, knocking the door of the mom. She is not opening. Get lost. But the son is not leaving. He is still there. On the doorstep, he is sitting, tired, and he gone to sleep. After a while, mother realized, she opened the door, she found the son is sleeping on her doorstep, on the floor. She became so emotional. She came to hug him, kiss him, my son. Did not I tell you, don't go anywhere, listen to me, obey me. 
Who is going to help you if you don't listen to me? Hug him. Took him to home. Brother in ayat is observing this duty, this, this situation. And he says, Subhanallah. Is not Allah is more merciful than this mother? How come? We go away from Allah and we suffer, we suffer, we suffer, we don't come back to Allah. Who is going to help us? Allahu ghalibun ala amri. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can change. Nobody can challenge his, 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 his hukum, his authority. That Allah is waiting for us. We need to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us. We come back to Allah for the situation of the ummah. We pray for them. Suffering people of Rohingya, the Syrian, and other people. And we do our best to donate for them, to ease a bit of their all this difficult time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the here. And also we try our best to raise our voice, any kind of demo, any kind of protest, any kind of, you know, using social media or, or, or any kind of other media, pressurizing, drawing attention of the all, all, you know, whole society, whole world, that they should come forward to do something to rescue them, to stop this all I mean, bombardment and massacre, uh, genocide almost happening over there. May Allah SWT give us tawfiq to do something. Wa billahi tawfiq. Barak Allahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim. Wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bima fihi min al-ayat wa dhikul hakim. Wa aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'il muslimin min kulli dhamm. Fa astaghfiru wa